My name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Uh, welcome to my channel. Appreciate everybody watching. Uh, please like, subscribe if you do like the information in here, and uh, hit the bell if you want notifications. And comment below. Leave your Ethereum or Bitcoin address as I'm doing a 100 subscriber and 150 subscriber giveaway uh, for a cold storage coin and twenty dollars. So that's why I want the address uh, to send you to the address you like, and then you can um, put it on the cold storage coin if you want. But at least you have the cold storage coin and 20 bucks to, uh, um, you know, train with to make sure that you kind of know how the cold storage coin works. Very easy to reuse with the hot wallet, especially on your phone. Um, so moving right into it here. Uh, big market cap, 280 billion, almost 281 billion right now. Bitcoin's at 7,400, kind of just sustaining at that level here. I mean, as you can see on the seven, gra seven price graph, seven day price graph. You know, I would say five days ago, it just kind of stayed flatline. And then five days ago with everything else, five, four or five days ago, it all went down. So is it moving away from the pack? It's kind of the question that, uh, you know, we're kind of, you know, want answered at this point. And I'll get into that a little bit more as far as what could be a catalyst for this or what could be, um, um, you know, a wall in front of Bitcoin price where it can't get up over these support lines. Um, uh, so resistant lines, I'm sorry. So moving into just the graphing of Bitcoin real quick, if I can get into it, if it will let me. And that's not the one I wanted, but okay. Let's change that real quick, because I like you looking at Coinbase more than I like looking at anything. Uh, GDAX or Coinbase. So, you know, as you can see on the Fibonacci, it's just riding on that 3A2 line, and it's been riding on there since it broke away from the rest of the altcoin pack. As far as, you know, with Bitcoin dominance, it went up to 45, 46%. Is that correct? Yeah, 45% still. So, um, you know, when you have that much Bitcoin dominance um, change from what, 42%, I believe, to 45%. In that time, everything's going down. That's where it kind of made it separate. It started separating from the pack um, and making its new baseline um, percentage-wise against other coins. So is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? So uh, moving forward, you know, I read a lot of steam it, you know, and obviously these are just people, but, um, you know, I, I have been actually been watching this guy for a while and, and F.A. Munger, Fa Munger, Fam Munger, um, regular daily update on Bitcoin TA analyst opinion. So all these people are analysts that he gets, um, uh, you know, they're all in like a group and then he posts it on steam it and it posts uh, what they basically are coming up with. So. Um, all in all, you know, his summary is short term next 24 hour sentiment bullish. OK, and that was 13 hours ago. So we're still 11 hours left, 12 hours left or 10 hours left. Um, and we're still in the bullish phase. So kind of just looking into this, you know, he's not know too much news today, but the RSI on a 12 hour and four hour are coming back from oversold. Um, we are still consolidating at the 7400 level. Next major resistance at 76 with an MA 128 daily, November 2017 top. I mean, these guys really go over a lot of technical analysis. And I, I've checked a lot of this technical analysis and they seem to be on a, on a, on a percentage wise basis, they know what they're talking about, you know, at least on a percentage wise. Are they always right? No, they're not always right. But neither is anybody when it comes to cryptocurrency. But I'll tell you what, they're more right than they are wrong when it comes to these uh, things. How they got there may be a little bit uh, questionable, but they get there nonetheless. Because uh, even when I correlate it with the way I get there, it seems to get to the same conclusion, just in different ways, uh, using technical analysis and the feel for the market. So, um, reading all this, so it seems in the war of the bears and bulls, we're entering another battle. Can the bulls create enough FOMO to create distance to the lows and overcome major resistance levels, like I was saying? So, if we are not going to see the current levels, if so, we are not going to see the current levels for a long time. Okay, or do the bears lead the bulls into a trap then, and then smashing hard to the downside? That would create a lot of frustration and might lead to the capital capitulation, which you would expect to be necessary to call the bear market. Okay, so quote unquote, be called the bear market. Uh, or call the bear market over, I should say. So the bull scenario is what they're painting here, is we reconfirm 6,800, 7,000 level 
in a pullback, gathering strength for another move up. Uh, that confirms a higher low and bullish five way. So they're using the waves and propulsions um, to kind of get to their um, uh, conclusions here, which, are, you know, they're not saying they're bad at all. It's just where, where are you setting these waves? Uh, alternate bull flag is forming. That brings us directly to next resistant level at 8,300 from here. So again, this is a bull scenario that they're kind of putting out there. And, you know, their pricing, everybody in pricing seems to be a little off, you know, 100, 200, 300 bucks. But um, it, it still gets to that bull, you know, it's still in bull scenario. Uh, volume needs to increase. Absolutely. Our volume of Bitcoin right now has gone down, you know, under the four million, three and a half million now. Not really good to see, but uh, but it needs to go up up to five, six and sustain around six, seven million or billion. And we will be good to go in a bull scenario. So bear scenario. We move up one or two weeks into the death cross, 30 and 50 MA weekly at around 8,500 and then drop significantly. So that's why he's saying 8,600 for the bear, for the bullish. And, you know, again, could be a death cross and then get up to 8,500 and then just drop. Um, and that would be kind of a trap for the altcoins to trap them uh, to bring uh, Bitcoin back down. Alternate bears are turning after the RSI gets oversold and make a lower low. So bearish, so that's an alternate, okay? After breaking 5,800 in Bitcoin, a significant drop towards new lows in the range of 4,975 and 4,300. So we're kind of riding, you know, again, on that wave here, you know, as far as it's riding the 382, okay? So again, this is Fibonacci. This is mathematically um, the way that they kind of get to sentiment. Uh, what's the sentiment, market sentiment happening? And this Fibonacci retracement shows you that mathematical cousin numbers for sentiment. You know what I mean? And how they're getting there. So 382, 618. And, you know, right in that 382 line is kind of whether it's going to go up or is it going to go down. And if it goes down, it's going to go down. And if it hits a 236, it's, you know, which is why it's at 6,800. Everybody's kind of hitting on a resistant uh, support line. So that's Bitcoin for you, you know, and these guys go over a lot of things, short-term overview, um, you know, Lord of Truth, which is one of the analysts, he's slightly bullish on it. Um, and, and it's great to see, you wanna watch this on Steemit, uh, look at look this up on Steemit, um, Fam Unger, Fam Unger, okay? Um, this is uh, from the 22nd of July to the 18th of July. So he's, he's doing a week uh, on here. Um, let's see, keep moving down a little bit. I want to show you just one more thing, and it's this. I don't even know if you can really see it. I can't really blow it up. Um, but it's showing you all the way back to 2012. Every month, what the percentage is, uh, Bitcoin performance since 2012 on Bitstamp. So it'll just show you the performance on a monthly basis. And then you can kind of, you know, and I'm not saying it's just historical, you know, um, data. Um, but, it, you know, it, it helps you in your analy you know, when you're analyzing things, whether it's a technical analysis or not. It helps you analyze things when you kind of can see possible things forming. Um, what's the huge changes happening from this year to last year to five years ago, so on and so forth. So uh, I was looking this over and it was pretty interesting. And I'm going to keep kind of re re referring back to this on a monthly basis um, to kind of, you know, just get more of a feel for the market, really. Um, engaging you know things you know I, I i have a reddit um blog up right now uh i believe in bitcoin markets and um you know i'm getting a lot of feedback on it but you know a lot of people are saying that um you know you shouldn't be proactive you know you, nothing's par in crypto which he's right no nothing is par it's not what i was asking but you know he did have to mention that nothing is par in crypto um and it, it's better as an investor or trader to be reactive than it is to be proactive well you know, I mean, I, I, I hate to laugh at the guy, but, you know, the first thing my mentor told me to do is to play chess. And, you know, you know, blogging with this guy back and forth, he mentioned chess as well. So when you play chess, you set yourself up in position so you can, you know, have the upper hand, you know. So being reactive, you're not you're not putting yourself in an upper position. You're hoping that you're going to be putting yourself in an upper position after the fact and after the fact. You know, that's hindsight's 2020. It's proactivity is what makes people billionaires, trillionaires, millionaires, hundred thousandaires, thousandaires. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I'm not a rich man at all. You know what I mean? I'm not well off at all. 
Um, but I definitely am an entrepreneur at some point or at one level and obviously an investor in crypto and stock market trading uh, for a good three, three, four or five years now. So um, crypto, it's been um, you know less than a year. Stock market trading and having a mentor and going to college and, and learning all this stuff as I'm learning uh, and educating myself, it was actually a really, really big help to me to understand the market even more sufficiently in a smaller amount of time. So, um, uh, you know, just going off a tangent there, but that's a little bit about me and uh, cryptocurrency. So uh, if you want to look at my uh, Reddit blog, um, you know, go into Bitcoin markets and uh, it's basically it's about the ETFs, um, you know, after approval. If we're going to you know, get an ETF approval, and I'm just, I'm just going to say this, mention it real quick, and I'll get back into this. If we're going to get an approval, say, around August 10th or so on and so forth, is it going to be stamped on August 10th, or is it just decided that we're going to have ETFs? I think it's just going to be decided, and then it takes about another month to maybe three months for them to actually stamp approval on an actual ETF. Um, and once that ETF is then approved, Again, based on stock market standards, it takes about six months to even a year, if not even longer, for these ETFs to get active, to be able to be active on the markets and actually being able to do, you know, to do things. So um, if that happens, are we going to have two bull runs in 2019 or are we just going to have one big bull run with a cyclical in, you know, January, February, December, whatever around that area? Are we going to have two? We may have one down the line in Jan, July, August, um, or even at the end of 2019, closer to the end, September, October, before the next big cycle, hopefully, um, run. So are we cyclical, or are we now just starting to depend on ETFs and big money coming in, uh, investors to, to pump up the market? Because I think our cyclical times of boosting um, is gonna be coming to an end here. We get SECs coming in, so on and so forth. So that's a tangent, moving forward. Um, I wanted a crypto market today. You know, this is something that is kind of um, um, in tangent, in, in, you know, in, in correlation with cryptocurrency mark, coin market cap. I'm sorry. So the crypto market today, what I like about it is, you know, it, it goes over mega caps, large caps, mid caps, small caps. So you can actually break it down to what kind of coins you're actually trading. So if you're trading a small cap coin, you know, you click on into here and it'll give you kind of an overview of what every small cap coin is going in, not by exchange, but by coin. It tells you your gainers, it tells you your losers, the most active, the most unusual volume, which was a great one I thought to see was this unusual volume thing. So this is kind of telling you that something's happening in the market. There may, there's probably some news out there that you want to go see. So, um, you know, like today, I believe we have Augur. Yeah, Augur is the number one right now, and it, I mean, it took a huge spike here. So when I get into Coin Market Cap Overview, um, let's go back to the to the original front page here of it dashboard, and I get down here into the un unusual volume, and boom, Augur's in there. You know, 19% up, price is at 35 bucks. What's going on with Augur? So that, there it just kind of tells you that it's an unusual volume. Something is going on with Augur and the company or, you know, the cryptocurrency, blockchain, whatever. Uh, when you see these just gainers, it's just saying, hey, you know, something gained. Something, you know, maybe it was a mainnet launch, so on and so forth. When you see an unusual volume, something's going on. Okay, so it's just something you might want to, you know, peek in there if you are day trading, swing trading. Um, small cap coins, large cap coins, mega cap coins. It really does break it down per coin, not per exchange. Because sometimes, you know, when you just look at an exchange, you don't get the whole overview. So at least you're looking at the big overview, then you're able to focus in on per exchange per coin on here. So it's a great thing to see, and it changes um, on an hourly basis. You know, I keep reloading this, and this was really, really down on, a, you know, as you can see, one hour, 60% up from all cryptocurrencies you know, together in the coin market cap and 22% down. Well, I think two, two hours ago, it was like 90% down and 10% up. So uh, overall crypto market. So crypto market today, I think it's a great one. You know, I've stumbled on this uh, about a month ago and I've been kind of, um, you know, using it and researching it. It works pretty well as far as a gauge point, uh, over, overview, you know, macro look of it. So think, speaking of macro traders, Mike Novogratz, a herd of institutional investors moving into crypto. So what I really wanted to touch on on this is two things, okay? So he's speaking to the street, uh, which was an interview he was doing. Novogratz highlighted the, the role of venture capital funds as the first port of call for institutional investment into cryptocurrency. 
Okay, their first way of participating is going to be through venture capital funds. Many of them are already participating participating because they they've invested in Sequoia or Polychain or Benchmark or many other VC funds that invest in this area. The second step for them will be buying the coins and or the ICOs themselves. But many of them are participating in the ICOs already through their venture investments. So venture um, uh, venture capital, basically venture capital funds is what he's looking for. VCFs, okay. Um, and then according to uh, Novogratz, all the venture capitalists are now buying in with fervor, namely Japanese tech conglomerate SoftBank, great to see, Tokyo-based investment giant SBI Holdings, and many funds in Hong Kong. Asia, 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 I'm telling you, I mean, Asia makes big moves, I, I suggest we follow, but you know, we're, we're, you know, as SEC and so on and so forth, we're on our own pace at this point, um, for America anyway. Security tokens, this is number two. Security tokens may also be the catalyst to a corporate injection of capital as they replace the traditional equity stakes held by investors. In a July 21st interview, Novogratz pointed out, with a security token, you're just buying a percentage of revenue and a percentage of profits in a company. It will feel a lot like equity. So it's, that's a good feel. That's a good transition into mainstreaming if it's just a good equity feel and you're just uh, buying a revenue and a percentage of profits in a company. So. Um, you know, yeah, so let me see if I'm uh, messing up things here. You know, I know it's kind of loud. I have a fan running in the back there. I apologize, but I, uh, <laughs> I laid a lot of grout and stuff uh, today with my buddy. My buddy came over, which I appreciate you coming over and helping me, Bob's. Um, and uh, we just got a lot of grout knocked out today. So I'm kind of helping it dry out with the fan going on and it cools down my house as well. Moving forward. Celebs and crypto. So it's a big mixed bag of crypto collaboration. Now, the one thing I do want to touch on, I'm not an, uh, um, an advisor, financial advisor. Do your own uh, research and make your own decisions at the end of everything. You know, I'm a financial consultant for my business. As a YouTuber, I'm not a financial advisor. But I do want to touch on other people. You know, as you can see, celebs and crypto, it's a big thing. You know, you got Snoop Dogg coming in and, he, you know, he's investing or, you know, uh, Hyping up uh, weed coins, you know, marijuana coins and, you know, the blockchains and I don't know, I can't remember if it's Paragon coin or if it's another coin coming out. I believe that's the game. The game's doing Paragon coin. Anyways, the point is, is how much does Snoop Dogg really know about cryptocurrency? And, and that's something you really do want to research if you're going to go over and look at these guys. Because, you know, Katy Perry, crypto, I mean, how many, she just has a lot of followers. That's why people ask her to... Um, uh, push cryptocurrency, you know, I mean, she's got, you know, cryptocurrency for fingernails. Cool. Cool. Do you, do you really know what it's about or are you just getting into it? You know, and of course she sits down with Warren Buffett, horrible person to talk to cryptocurrency about. And, uh, she, she does interviews, you know, for people and so on and so forth. Ashton Kutcher would say it'd be one number one person. I would say that actually knows the shit. Uh, I've known this for years. Excuse me. Um, He's an accomplished venture capitalist, co-founder of A-Grade Investments. He's very accomplished. He has a, a lot of um, uh, investments and so on and so forth that have done great over the years. So he knows exactly what he's talking about when it comes to cryptocurrency. So if he's hyping something up, um, it, it's a great thing to see. So, you know, uh, you know, 50 Cent, I don't think he knows very much about cryptocurrency, but he definitely knows how to make money using cryptocurrency. You know, he put an album out and made like $17 million, $19 million uh, in Bitcoin, you know, for that. Lionel Messi, you know, is a big, great guy and uh, a football star. But again, how much does he know about cryptocurrency? Floyd Mayweather is back in some credit card that was supposed to turn crypto into fiat. And it's, um, you know, now everybody's getting sued because uh, they didn't get uh, approval from the SEC for the ICO. So. He's getting uh, he, he's getting raked through the coals on it. Jamie Foxx, he was doing Common Hood. How much does he know? You know what I mean? Donald Glover, he's kind of been in it to win it for a while now. Um, and, you know, again, so, you know, when, when these celebrities come into play and say, hey, look at this, you know, because DJ Khaled did the whole cryptocurrency uh, card, too, with Mayweather, and, they and it failed. So, you know, Paris Hilton, she did something, it failed. Steven Seagal, he did something, it failed. The game, he did something. Paragon coin. I don't know. Seems like it's failing to me, though, because every time you know, I'm looking for a marijuana coin to invest in, Paragon coin doesn't seem like the number one coin at the moment. Seems like a very stable coin, though, for what they're trying to do with the uh, blockchain. Um, so my point is this. 
Watch who you're listening to, okay? Just watch who you're listening to. Some of these guys know what they're talking about. Others, I don't see that they don't know what they're talking about. They're just being paid or um, they see, you know, it sounds good to them and it looks good to them. And there's no downside to them, so why not promote it? Sim simple as that. I would. There was no downside to me either. Um, so um, just, you know, just a little insight to there. You know, if you guys, I'm sure everybody knows this already, but I just wanted to touch on it when it comes to the celebrities. So something about mining I really wanted to get into. Crypto mining decline expected to slash GPU prices. Okay. So they're expecting the the mining to decline you know what i mean so you know if we're all expecting a big bull run to go up why would the cryptocurrency mining decline you know through graphics cards the only thing the reason why it, it declined is because amd or was it or was it nvidia one of them wasn't prepared for um this huge boom and uh they just stopped making you know new cards and they you know so our uh, new gpus so um, now they're kind of um, uh, stepping back a little bit and then, you know, they're, they're just repositioning their business model um, as far as what they're going to be doing for these GPUs. But, you know, what this says is, you know, crypto mining decline expected. If, it, if the mining decline actually happens, then absolutely GPUs are going to be cheaper. That's, that's just, that's normal, you know, less demand. You know what I mean? You're, you're going to, you know, cheapen your supply so you can get the demand back up. Um, but, um, is it going to happen is kind of the point. AMD was the one, I believe, who wasn't really prepared for um, the, the big run of GPU buys and so on and so forth. NVIDIA was, I believe. And um, just, you know, kind of pressing on this because AMD, um, they had a problem uh, with their Radeon RX 580s and RX 570s because they just sold out completely due to the Ethereum mining demand. And now they don't have many of them. They're, you know, they're coming out with more 580s and more 570s but the NVIDIA cards have moved on and there's bigger and better ones out there for just the same amount of money. So will AMD GPU cars go down? Probably when it comes to these models, the RX 500 models, um, just be because you know they've made so many of them and they have to get rid of them at some point. But with the NVIDIA cars, they're staying up with the technology and they're, buy and they're making new NVIDIA cards with new upgrades able to, to, to be um, hash specific, mining specific. Um, instead of being, you know, gaming slash mining, you know, uh, focused. So um, just, you know, kind of something I want to touch on when it comes to mining. If you are a miner um, or if you're interested in mining, maybe come down to a decline here soon with the AMD cards, regardless of whether we're going to have a mining, a mining decline or not. If AMD doesn't get up and start making new uh, GPU cards with new uh, things, uh, functions on them, uh, easier functions, so on and so forth, then they're, they're gonna have to cheapen up their 570s, the RX 500 uh, GPU series, so they can sell them off. So, uh, you know, moving forward, last but not least, Crypto Fear and Greed Index, 46 today, 43 yesterday. I mean, it's still kind of sitting in the 40, uh, it's fear, you know, but it was sitting in the neutral a couple days ago. So we're still kind of sitting in the same area here and it took a little drop down and now it's going back up. Um, so we'll see uh, if, uh, these guys, these analysts here on Steemit that I've been following, this fa fam Unger um, analysts here, uh, family of analysts, are correct. And whether we're going to have a bull or, or bearish scenario, and then or, or, or bull or bearish trend, short-term trend, and whether these scenarios are going to happen in these in those trends. So I'm actually interested if they do. So if one of, one of the other is going to happen. And if one of them does, I'm going to follow these and see if these actually happen. And if they do, wow, I'm going to be watching Fam Unger a lot. You know what I mean? And, and obviously giving them a little coin on Steam it just for the info. So uh, my name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below. It all helps my channel and the dogs that I'm going to be rescuing. I want to be opening up a dog sanctuary and uh, possibly training dogs here um, in my next one. So you guys have a great day. Keep up the grind.